Welcome to my third video on your home yeast lab made easy. In this video we're going to talk about aseptic techniques. So these are the methods that you use to ensure that your samples remain clean when you're working with them in your home lab. So as I mentioned in my first video, one of the most important things you need is a clean and uncluttered workstation, uh, which before you start any work you're going to want to clean off uh, first with soap and water. Once that's dry you then want to spray it down with a sanitizing agent. While that sanitizing agent is working, you next need to get yourself prepared. And what I mean by that is you need to make sure you are clean at the same time. And so what you really want to focus on, of course, is washing your hands. So when you're washing your hands, make sure that you are using um, soap that you're cleaning between your fingers. And when you're, you're choosing a soap, make sure it's something that's not going to dry your hands out because that can cause your skin to flake and that those flakes, of course, may carry uh, bacteria. Uh, so it's actually in many cases better to have a, a hydrating soap um, rather than it is to have an antibacterial soap because a lot of those antibacterial soaps will dry your skin. So once your work surface is prepared uh, and you've uh, cleaned your hands, the next thing to do is of course is to start working in a work area. Now there are a few things you can do to uh, further limit the chance of contamination. The first is try and wear um, a long sleeve shirt, um, but make sure it's, it's a, a fairly tight fitting shirt. You won't want something baggy because when you're working around your flame, you don't want to risk, uh, of course, catching your sleeves on fire. Now, the topic of gloves is um, maybe a little more controversial. In the biology labs, we wear these uh, to protect ourselves. They're not actually to protect our samples. They're to protect us from our samples. Uh, and, of course, being beer organisms, the stuff we're growing in our home lab don't really need um, protective steps like this. But they do cover your skin, and they might add a bit of a protective barrier. What I find though is that these gloves um, really impair your dexterity and so the loss of dexterity that I get wearing these I think is worse than the, the, the risk of infection when I don't wear them. But it's up to you. Just make sure if you are buying these you're wearing something tight fitting. So one of the most important parts of aseptic techniques is working properly with your flame, be it a Bunsen burner or an alcohol lamp. If you've watched my alcohol lamp video you'll know that the idea of the flame is it's going to draw air across the bench that will then rise in a column uh, and then over, eventually spill out over the top. And so what this does is it creates an area right around the flame uh, where you basically have air that's moving upwards. And so this is your safe work area because that area, those upward moving air currents should protect uh, from any sort of downward falling bacteria or dust. Now of course this is just airflow, so you do have to work properly with it or you can disrupt it. So you always want your movements to be slow and deliberate. Uh, you don't want to be moving fast. You don't want to be, be shaking or anything like that. You also actually don't want to do what I'm doing right now, uh, which is talking. Because, of course, when you talk, you're expelling air. And you can see my uh, speech is making the flame bob or wrap back and forth a little bit. Obviously, you want to be careful. You don't want to pass your hands over top of the flame too closely because you can burn yourself. And so by extension, if you're positioning tools and tubes and stuff, you should be trying to position them in a place where you can reach them without actually um, putting your hand over top of that flame. So one of the most important tools um, in, aseptic te in aseptic techniques is the loop. So you can hopefully see that loop there against my hand. Uh, so you can see it's a, it's a small diameter loop uh, attached uh, to a handle via a wire. It's made out of nichrome, um, which is a very heat resistant metal. And basically we can use this to pick up samples of bacteria or yeast and move them from a tube to a plate or a plate to a tube or wherever we need to move them. And we can do it in a way which is completely sterile so long as we treat the loop correctly. So the, the most important part is simply heating the loop until it's red hot. So hopefully you can see that there in the video. The loop is red hot and we're basically burning off any bacteria or any other contaminants off that loop. And there's nothing on earth that can survive the sorts of temperatures you're getting with a red hot loop. Now of course the question at this point, or the problem at this point, is what do you do with this red hot loop? Because if you were to put this, uh, touch this to, to a bacteria or to a yeast uh, colony, it would kill it. It would cook them. So there's two things we can do. Uh, one I'll show you in a few uh, minutes when I go over agar plates, but anytime you have an agar surface you can touch the loop to a, 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 a part of the agar that's sort of dispensable and that'll cool it. But the other thing you can do is what I have here, and that's have a small container of 70% uh, alcohol, so that can be beverage alcohol, 70% methanol, 70% isopropyl. 
Although it is flammable, it's not flammable enough that the heat of the loop will light it on fire. So what we can do is we can quench our heat in the alcohol. So I don't know, hopefully you could hear that sizzle. And then we can simply burn off that excess alcohol and that loop isn't very hot. It's about body temperature. So the, the amount of fire that came from that wasn't enough to really heat anything up. Obviously when you're working with this, be very careful not to put a burning loop into the alcohol and you should have a, a pot lid or something that you can put over top of this. So if it does catch fire, you can put out the fire by starving it for oxygen. All right, so the next part of aseptic techniques to talk about is how to work with tubes uh, around the flame. And the flame is really important when it comes to working with tubes um, because this is what will allow us to open a tube, put stuff into it or take stuff out of it in a way which keeps the inside of the tube clean and sterile. So the most important part, um, as with any part of working with a flame, is you want to work as close to the flame as is safe. Uh, so you can see here I'm, I'm just a few inches away from, from this flame. When you take the lid off, if you can, try and keep it in your hand so you can immediately put it back over top. But if you have to put it down, be sure you're putting it down as close to the flame as possible, but somewhere where you're not going to be reaching over top of it. So for example, back here. So now I could grab my, my loop, I could go into here, grab some yeast, move it to a plate or to another starter, and then when I'm done I can put the lid back on the tube. Now the other thing you can do with, with the flame that can uh, really help keep things clean with your tube is to do what we call flaming. And all that means is you, you, you quickly pass the tube, the cap, whatever, through the flame itself. And the flame is hot enough that it'll burn off any bacteria or anything on the surface of the tube or the surface of the lid without actually damaging the lid itself. Obviously you have to go fast enough uh, so you don't melt the plastic. You can then take that sterile tube, pour out from it or do whatever it is you need to do, knowing that that surface is clean. All right, so the last part of aseptic technique is working with plates or petri dishes. And so here I have a, a petri dish of wart agar. Uh, I will make another video showing you how to make these. The important thing though that I want you to notice here is here's the gel. So I essentially have this plate upside down and anytime you're working with the plate, except for when you're actively either inoculating the plate or removing things from it, the plate should be upside down. What that allows is for the condensation here that you can see on the lid to stay off the gel. We don't want that dripping onto the gel because that can neither carry contamination in or it can smear out any colonies we have growing on the gel. So when we actually want to work with this petri dish, that is the only time we would flip it. You want to flip it gently in order to try and prevent um, water from draining down. And when we take the lid off, um, we can choose to hold it in our hand. Or again, uh, like last time, we can place it back here if we need, the, need two hands worth of dexterity. As soon as we're done doing whatever it is that we're doing, we want to cover that lid, uh, the petri dish, and flip it back upside down. Now I mentioned earlier, the way we work with a loop when it comes to petri dishes is a little bit different. We don't need to be um, cooling in uh, alcohol. What we can do instead is we can heat our loop and we can now take that heated loop and cool it by touching it to a part of the gel that doesn't contain any yeast or anything of, of interest. And so you'll probably hear it hiss here when I do that. That loop was now cool enough that I could pick up a colony on for this plate or I could go into a tube to grab some yeast to put onto this plate and continue um, with my culturing. Anytime you're done working with the loop, at the end of the experiment, you always do want to flame it so that nothing's growing on it until the next time. And you can then put everything away, put out your alcohol lamp and continue on with your uh, culturing. So that's it for aseptic techniques. They're pretty simple. Uh, if you're just getting into this, I would recommend practicing them. Uh, using just some sacrificial plates and some sacrificial yeast, but they're pretty easy skills to master and once you have a, a good handle on them you should be able to use these for propagating and purifying your own yeast and your own bacteria.